Claude just released a brand new feature called Cowork, and this is the craziest AI feature that I think has ever been released. Because you could use this feature in order to let Claude take control of your entire computer. You could have it take action across thousands of different apps, in fact, anything with an MCP server, and so much more. By the end of this video, you're going to know exactly what this new feature is, how you could use it, and so many different use cases you could use it for. Now this new tool that I'm talking about is going to be Claude Cowork. So now if you pull up Claude and you need the desktop app in order to actually access this right now, it's not available on the web app. What you are going to notice is you have chat, you have code, and now you have Cowork. And essentially what this is, is this is Claude code for the rest of your life. And this right here is pretty incredible. So the first thing that you're going to notice is that this works just like a simple chat. You can tell it exactly what you want to do. You can do hashtag slash for different commands and you could see that you could get this to do two things. For example, if I click on this folder right here, this is actually going to be able to access any folder that is on my computer right here. In addition to that, you could actually give it access to your local device. Now, there are some security concerns with that that we'll go through in just a little bit, but first let's get through some of these other things. In addition to that, if we click right here, we can actually connect this to all of our different connectors. And if you want to see all the different connectors that you could use with this, you're just going to want to come over here, come into settings and then from here you're going to want to come into connectors and you'll be able to see all the different things that you can actually hook this up to and you could add in custom connectors here in addition to that if you come down here to extensions you'll be able to see tons of different extensions for example you could have this send text messages for you you could hook this up to google chrome you could hook this up to your apple notes you could hook this up to be able to control your mac there are tons of different things that you can connect this to and that you could give it access to in addition to that, since we are on Claude here, this also has basically unlimited MCP access because Anthropic, the developers of Claude are actually the same people that created MCP. Now, you could see that we could connect all of that right here. So basically, this could take action across anything that you want. And then you'll see right here also that you're going to see progress. You're going to see artifacts, which is what is actually being outputted. And you'll be able to track all the different tools and files in each use case as Claude goes through and actually works on something. And they give us some pretty good prompts right here for what it could do. For example, creating a file, crunching data, making a prototype, organizing files, prepping for the day, or sending a message. But what I actually want to show you is something that I think is even crazier. So this right here is probably one of my favorite use cases that I've seen this used for. So as we can see right here, this is an incredibly messy desktop right here. And if you're like me, my desktop looks exactly like this. But what we could actually do is pull up Cowork right here and say, please help organize my desktop. And then what we can see right here is that now this is running a command and can actually see our screen where it says that's quite a cluttered desktop. I can help you with a mix of different things. And then it goes through everything that we have here. So 70 projects and code files, 20 screenshots, 35 photos, 18 video, and 25 text and document files. Doing a little bit of quick math, this is around 160 things, and then check out what this does. So this writes out a plan for how it's going to move everything into all these different folders. It is going to leave projects where they are. It is going to group them by type, and then we could get this to go through and do it just like this. And then check this out, just like this, hands-free, this goes through and actually begins to organize everything. Now, literally just like that, this went through and organized our entire desktop. And again, this is just a brief preview to show you exactly what this could do because it could do anything that you could do on a computer or across all the different apps that you could give a connection to. Now, before I get into all the other crazy use cases you could use this tool for, I wanted to make sure that you're taking 2026 seriously when it comes to AI because the last thing that you wanna do is sleep Sleep on the AI train while this thing is about to take off. Because if you're not fully up to date on the latest AI tools, AI agents, and all of that right now in 2026, you're truly going to get left behind. But I have a free way for you to get up to date on things. Because Outskill, the first ever AI-focused educational platform to accelerate AI learning for people just like you or me, they're hosting a two-day AI mastermind this weekend, and it's going to be a live event. It's happening this Saturday and Sunday from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern on both days, and right now is the perfect moment to join because you get an absolutely free as part of their New Year Upskilling Fest. This is 16 hours of AI training that's already been built for 10 million plus AI professionals worldwide 
worldwide, and it's rated 4.9 out of 5 on Trustpilot. And this helped people from marketing, from operations, from finance. It's even helped people become entrepreneurs by learning about these AI tools and then building their own businesses. And you can get into this for free at the pinned comment below. And this is where you're going to learn how to build AI agents that plan, write, execute, and report for you, how to automate workflows that run even while you're asleep, how to connect tools like Sheets, Notion, CRM, and email to create profitable systems, and how to use AI to save hours every single week and get an unfair advantage at work. Not just that, you're also going to learn how to profit from these skills because people from this very training have launched their own AI-powered services that bring in 2 to 3K every week, and some people have built businesses that bring in tens of thousands of dollars a month just by applying the systems that they're taught. And to kickstart your year, you are going to get a premium lifetime bonus like the AI Prompt Bible, the AI Profit Roadmap, your personalized AI Toolkit Builder, only if you attend both days. And here's the most interesting part. When you sign up, you're also going to get access to the 2026 AI Survival Hackbook, which is a comprehensive compilation of all the upcoming AI shifts for 2026 so that you could get ahead of them and stay ahead. Of them. So what are you waiting for? Seats are limited. Click the link below and get into it right now. And don't forget to join the WhatsApp group in order to stay up to date on all the changes. For example, I have something else that I need to do on my computer. In fact, I need to do this every day. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here into downloads and I am actually going to give this access to two files on my computer. So what I want to give this access to is customer spend and then profile export. Now, essentially what I need to do is figure out who needs to be removed from here. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say, I need help organizing my profiles export file. I need to remove anyone that has a paid subscription on Stripe that will be in the customer spend. Essentially, I need two different sheets. One, the people that are left that I need to add into my CRM and two, the other folks that are duplicates amongst both files because I need to remove them from my email send. Now, this would typically be a very human task because it takes multiple files right here. But as we could see, we could give this to Claude Cowork right here. And now this is actually going to be able to go through and do this incredibly easy. So we could see that this is spinning up this agent right here, now has access to both these files. It has this prompt and then boom, this is going to go through and start working through this. We can see here that this has now gone through. This has read the files. It understands the structure. It then created a Python script in order to actually go through and do this. And we could see that it knew that it had a base skill in order to actually do that. It went through, it ran this, and it gave us how many unique emails there are. It gave us sheet one, which is add to CRM, people that are not paying customers, and then sheet two, remove from email send, which people that are already paying. Guess what? This went through and now gave me this new file. So I can now come over here and I can see these contacts right here, which are the files that I uploaded to it. And now I have these artifacts right here. And also this went through and created a file that I can now access and have both of those that I can then upload to my CRM. Or I could see if we have an integration or an MCP for that CRM and do it directly through here. Now, in addition to that, we can see all the other things that we have right here. For example, I'm going to click on create a file and then we can see that this actually walks us through here. So create a file about, I'm going to say, building AI automations in make.com. And then we want to say here, ask any clarifying questions and share a plan of how you're actually approach this. And then it asks to choose what kind of file we're going to create. I am going to click on a document right here. What kind of document we could come over here and we can do article or blog post. And then this actually goes through and then customizes what this prompt actually looks like right here. So you could go through all of these in order to actually customize your prompt. So we're going to go through this again, document, we're going to go with an article or a blog post, I'm going to choose that. And then I'm going to put building AI automations in make.com. We're going to put who the target audience is, I'm going to put AI beginners, and then I'm going to let this go through. And this is actually going to do this for me. Again, this is going to spin up this agent right here. Now, one thing that I do want to say is I would make sure that you're choosing the right agent here, depending on what you're trying to do. For example, if you were going to be coding something, I would definitely go with Opus. Since this is a more simple task, I would go with Sonnet because otherwise it's going to be using way too much power to do something that's 
Really simple. Okay, so now that this is actually spun up, we could see exactly how this works. So what kind of tone do we want? I'm gonna go with conversational and friendly here. What is the ideal length of this? I'm gonna go with medium. Should we provide this? I'm gonna say use your judgment. And then do we want anything in here? I'm gonna say a step-by-step -step tutorial. I'm actually gonna put all of this in here. And then we're gonna click on submit. And now what this is gonna do is actually run off and do this. And we could see just how quick this actually is at doing this. And if we wanted to, we could see all different progress happening here. We could see everything that's going to be used, all the context is going to be used all from right here. Now, while this is going through and doing this, what I wanted to do is actually come over here and start a new task again to show you how you could have this doing multiple things for you all the time. So we're going to come over here. We're going to click on new task up here and we're going to get this to do something else. In fact, we're going to get this to prep for my day. So help me prepare for today. And I'm going to come over here and it's going to ask me any clarifying questions and share a plan of how it's actually going to approach this task. And then this is going to spin up this agent right here, send this request and then begin doing this. And we could see again, this gets going very quickly. And we could see over here that this just moved to the top right here because this is actually done. So if we come over here and scroll down a little bit, it does start at the top, which is kind of buggy and kind of glitchy, but as we could see, if we scroll down here, that this is actually done, and we could see that this now is actually saved right here, and we could check out what it looks like. So we'll see it right here, over here in the artifacts, and we can click on this, and we can allow Claude to actually preview this file right here, and then we have our article right here, which is pretty awesome, and this goes through building your first AI automation with make.com, and this goes through a beginner's guide to actually be able to do this. It walks through why make it goes through actually setting up your verse thing we have screenshot placeholders right here which is pretty awesome and this literally built out exactly what we needed and exactly what we wanted so again if we come back over here and click on this we could see the order in which these are actually showing up is the order in which you're actually going through and making progress on top of that if you wanted to archive anything you just click right here and be able to do that now we need to come back over here in order to actually prepare for my schedule and we could see what type of preparation do I need for today? What I actually need done is going to be a daily briefing. So we're going to click on this right here. What information and sources should it look at? I'm going to put calendar right here. I don't need it to check anything else. We're going to click on next. And then what do we actually want? I just want a brief summary right here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then what this is going to go through, this is going to access my calendar analyze my day, and then create this summary for me. Now, the reason that I chose this is because Claude doesn't actually have access to my calendar right now. So we could see that there are several ways to do this. And this is a conversation just like an employee. So I'm going to say enable the integration right here. And then I'm going to walk you through exactly how this works. And the reason that I chose this was again, because this doesn't have access to this. So what I can now do, it told me that it didn't have access. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to come to connectors. I'm going to come into manage connectors and we can come over here to Google calendar and we can connect this. And now we can come back over to Claude and see that this now does have connection here. So we could come over here and say, you should now have connection to my Google calendar. And then this will actually go through and confirm if it does. And now we can see that it actually has access to my calendar. We could see that it created this daily briefing for me. And again, you could get this to go through your calendar your email. You could get it to go through your drive, wherever you actually have this information. And we could see everything that needs to be done here that I have scheduled on my calendar. And it gives me key insights. It gives me recommendations. And it even gives me suggested prep for tonight in order to prepare for tomorrow because it did see that for tomorrow. Now, I did want to go through here and highlight the risks of actually using this tool because I can't make a video on this tool without actually doing that, especially since Anthropic sent me these risks. So to minimize risks, you want to make sure that you avoid granting access to local files with sensitive information. For example, financial documents, your social security, your taxes, stuff like that. Don't give it access. In addition to that, when using Claude in the Chrome extension, make sure you limit access to trusted sites only. And if you choose to extend Claude's default internet access settings, be careful to only extend internet access to sites that you trust, and you should make sure that you're monitoring Claude, and then we have a very important notification right here. And again, I just want you to actually go through and be aware of the risks of using something like this, because when you give Claude Cowork access to your entire computer or your browser, some things could go wrong. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I would strongly suggest you check out this video right here that walks you through a ton of other changes that just came to Gemini that I guarantee you haven't seen yet.